welcome to PW English YouTube channel. I'm Shalini Somashekar, your botany teacher. I know that all the NEET 2025 aspirants must be working really hard and preparing for the upcoming exam. I know that a lot of you also struggle with assertion and reason type of questions. So I'm making this video for those students who find it a little difficult. I hope this video will make it easier for you to navigate through such questions and answer correctly. So let's get started. Uh, in the NEET exam, you can expect around two to three assertion and reason type of questions. Let's understand how this question is first of all. In the question, there's going to be two statements. One statement is called the assertion and the following statement is called the reason. Always assertion and reason type of questions, there will be two statements given, one for assertion, one for reason, okay? And following these two statements, the options are almost always going to be the same. You will have one option that says both assertion and reason are true and reason correctly explains the assertion. Another option would be both assertion and reason are true but the reason does not explain the assertion correctly. The third option would be assertion is true but reason is false and the fourth option would be assertion is false but the reason is true. Sometimes you can have the fourth option to be both assertion and reason are false. After analyzing the neat examination paper over the last few years, most cases, this is the option that you will have, okay? Assertion is false, but reason is true. Very rarely you might have instead of this option as both assertion and reason are false. Basically, this is a true or false kind of question. Similar to how you have uh, statement-based questions like which of the following are correct, which of the following are incorrect, that kind of question where you have two statements as assertion and reason. And you have to find out whether both the statements are correct, both of them are incorrect, one is correct, one is incorrect. So this is what we have to figure out. What most students do in this question is, one of the mistakes that they do is, they will assume that the options order is exactly like this. Okay, that is where you could possibly go wrong. That is one place where you could possibly go wrong. So it's not necessary that the options are going to be in this same order every time. The options will be the same, but the order could be switched. The first option, whenever you've practiced in your um, coaching material or wherever, usually they retain the order to be the same. Okay, so but you're used to answering such questions with options in the exact same order. But in the NEET exam, this need not be the exact same order. It could be both assertion and reason are true and reason doesn't correctly explain the assertion. This could be the first option. This could be the second option. This could be the first option. This could be the first option. The order of options could change but because you're so familiar with this order because most of the questions that you've solved had option the options in this order in a state of anxiety in a state of nervousness and exam fear and all of that pressure it's possible that you assume the order to be something else and mark the incorrect answer so every time you come across such a question please make sure to read the options correctly all right that is one thing now the second thing, what most students do is, the moment they read the assertion and reason statement, they will start finding a link between the two. I would advise against it. Don't consider both the statements together already in your mind. There is a possibility that the assertion statement and the reason statement are entirely unrelated from absolutely different concepts as well. So instead of starting uh, to, you know, to link the two statements the moment you read the question, I would suggest you to read both the statements independently. As a standalone statement, is the assertion statement correct or wrong? As a standalone statement, is the reason statement correct or wrong? So you first look at the assertion statement, reason statement independently without forcing any link between them. Identify just if the two statements statements are true or false. This is a very simple true or false kind of question, right? So let's take this question for example. In the assertion statement, it's given abscisic acid induces dormancy in seeds. Does abscisic acid induce dormancy in seeds? That's what I need to know right now, whether it is true or false. I don't care whether it is related to the reason or not yet, okay? So first I will look at the assertion statement. I know that abscisic acid induces seed dormancy. So, this is true. Reason statement. Abscisic acid promotes seed germination. Abscisic acid cannot induce seed dormancy and promote seed germination at the same time. They are both contradicting each other. So, abscisic acid does not promote seed germination. This is false. Okay. So, because I read both these statements independently as standalone statements, I got clarity. What happens when you 
instantly after looking at the question try to connect these two statements is you will read abscisic acid in both the assertion statement and the reason statement and immediately you will be like okay both are about abscisic acid probably they are related so you will right away go and mark the uh, first option or the second option both of them are correct statements or it correctly explains the assertion so that is what you would mark right first thing first step assertion and reason independently try to find out whether it is true or false so after doing this exercise you know that assertion is true and reason is false so you can mark option c as the correct answer if only you try to connect a link make a link between the two initially it is likely that you will answer option a as the correct answer okay the question is easy if one of the two statements are wrong okay if assertion is wrong reason is true it's easy if assertion is true reason is false the question is easy to answer the problem comes only when both assertion and reason are true and you're not able to figure out if the reason correctly explains the assertion or it doesn't explain the assertion so let's solve a couple couple of questions to find out how to navigate through such kind of questions all right so this is the first one so the takeaway that we get from here is that whenever you're given such a question read both statements independently without forcing a link between them all right what is our next question glycolysis occurs in the mitochondria glycolysis partially oxidizes glucose now again both of them are about glycolysis the moment you look at glycolysis glycolysis in assertion and reason you might it might seem like it is option a but take each statement individually uh glycolysis occurs in the mitochondria it most definitely does not occur in the mitochondria right it occurs in the cytoplasm it occurs in prokaryotic organisms as well in the cytoplasm so reason statement is i'm um, sorry assertion statement is false now your job is easy okay whenever one statement is wrong also your job becomes easy it becomes difficult only when both are correct so this is an easy question let's take a look at the reason statement glycolysis partially oxidizes glucose yes it partially oxidizes glucose this is true so our option here our correct answer here is assertion is false but reason is true okay so this is easy let's move on here is an assertion and reason type of question i want you to read each statement independently assertion statement reads ovary of the flower develops into fruit after fertilization ovule transforms into seed after fertilization does the ovary develop into fruit after fertilization yes following fertilization post fertilization changes happen in flowers ovary part transforms into the fruit so this is true ovule transforms into seed after fertilization does the ovule transform into seed after fertilization yes that is also true if you look at both of these statements they are both true so we have to choose between these two options now both assertion and reason are true now all we have to do is find out whether reason and assertion have anything in common right now they do have something in common both of them are post fertilization modifications that will happen in a flower right or within the ovary or with the ovary and the ovule so both of them are related to post fertilization events now you have to read the first statement add because here and then continue reading the second statement find out whether it will make any sense to you or not ovary of the flower develops into fruit after fertilization because ovule transforms into seed after fertilization is the assertion a consequence of the reason is what we have to find out is the ovule transforming into uh, is the ovary transforming into fruit because the ovule is transforming into seed not really they are independent events they are independently happening ovary is not becoming a fruit because the ovule is becoming the seed right so ovary becoming a fruit is not a consequence of ovule becoming the seed if the ovule does not become the seed can the ovary not become a fruit think about it that way so both the statements are related to post fertilization events both of them are correct but ovary becoming a fruit is not a consequence of ovule becoming a seed right so both assertion and reason are true and the reason correctly does not explain the assertion okay so option b is the correct answer over here now let's
let's take a look at this question. In the assertion statement, it is given DNA replication occurs during the S phase of the cell cycle. Does DNA replication occur during S phase of cell cycle? Yes, it does in eukaryotes. So, this is a true statement. What is the reason given? S phase stands for phase of synthesis. Does S in S phase stand for synthesis? Yes, it does because that is where uh, centrioles uh, duplicate and the chromosome uh, DNA replication also happens, right? So, both of these are true statements. This can be a little confusing for a lot of you. Now, pay attention. Now, in the assertion, they have given that replication occurs during S phase. Reason they have given S stands for synthesis. Now, does DNA replication occur in the S phase because we call S phase as synthesis phase because S here stands for synthesis? Is it because S stands for synthesis that DNA replication occurs during that phase? Not really, right? It is the opposite. We call that phase as S phase because in that phase DNA replication occurs. What we are saying here is DNA replication occurs in the S phase because S stands for synthesis. DNA doesn't know what name we have given to it. Replication is a process that happens during cell cycle and we have decided to call it S phase S for synthesis. Doesn't mean that is the reason why DNA replication is happening there. So here both the statements are true but the reason correctly does not explain the assertion. If only the assertion and state reason statements were reversed, the question would be like this. The assertion statement reads, S phase uh, stands for phase of synthesis, S stands for synthesis because DNA replication occurs during S phase of the cell cycle. Now both the statements are the same. This is also true. This is also true. Try inserting because here and reading this as a continuous sentence. S phase stands for the phase of synthesis because DNA replication happens during S phase of the cell cycle, right? We decided to call it S phase because synthesis of DNA is happening then, not the other way around. So, if you kind of insert because here and read the question, DNA replication occurs during the S phase of cell cycle because S phase stands for phase of synthesis, it doesn't making sense. If only it was reverse, it is correct. It correctly explains the assertion. Okay, so the statements are the same, but assertion and reason statements are reversed. You will get two entirely different options as the correct answer. So, always, always standalone statements, true or false first. Second, if both of them are true, if, if one of them is incorrect, then you have your answer easy. If one of them, if both of them are correct, we have to check if Assertion correctly explains the reason. I mean, the reason correctly explains the assertion or not. How do we do that? You insert because between the two sentences, between the two statements and read it as a single sentence. If it makes sense, it is option A. If it doesn't, then it's option B. Many a times, both the statements would be correct, very closely related. But still, the assertion will not be a consequence of reason. If they are very closely related, like in this question that we solved right now, there are mighty chances that you will answer the question incorrectly. So, really pay attention to what is the consequence, what is the reason and all of that and, and, and then attempt such questions. Okay, here is another question which is pretty simple. In the assertion statement, we have in angiosperms, double fertilization leads to the formation of a diploid zygote and triploid endosperm. Is this true as a standalone statement or not? It is true. Reason. One sperm fertilizes the egg and the other sperm fertilizes two polar nuclei. Is this correct? This is also correct. So, both the statements are correct. Now, what do we do? We insert because here and read it as a single sentence. In angiosperms, double fertilization leads to the formation of a diploid zygote and a triploid endosperm because one sperm fertilizes the egg and the other sperm fertilizes two polar nuclei. The reason why the diploid zygote and triploid endosperm is forming is because during formation of diploid zygote, one sperm is fertilizing with the egg, both are haploid. During formation of triploid endosperm, the second sperm or the second male gamete is fertilizing or fusing with the two polar nuclei, giving rise to a triploid endosperm. So, 
assertion and reason both the statements are true and the reason correctly explains the assertion in such a case you will have option a as the correct answer so what is the overall takeaway from this video whenever you are reading an assertion and reason type of question always read all of the options it it is not always in the order that you preconceive it to be check for the actual order in the options by reading the options carefully second thing that you need to do is take each statement as a standalone statement and find out whether it is true or false if one of them is false your job is easy you have to either uh, i mean you can choose the correct answer very easily the third thing is if both of them turns out to be true if both the statements are true then insert because between the assertion and reason statement and read it as a continuous sentence if it makes sense its uh, reason explains the assertion correctly if the assertion is the consequence of the reason then reason correctly explains the assertion if they don't make sense if that single sentence does not make sense then it does not correctly explain the assertion always check whether the two statements are related to the same con uh, concept if they are very unrelated then most likely the reason cannot explain the assertion if they are related then you you start getting confused then try and insert because and just give a couple of seconds to think about whether the assertion is really a consequence of the reason then you will arrive at your correct answer i hope this was helpful all the very best for your upcoming neat exams